Hey everyone, I hope this podcast and my blog and books have been helpful resources for you and will continue to be. But if you've been struggling with a chronic health problem and are feeling stuck, consider coming to work with my team and me at the California Center for Functional Medicine. We work with patients all over the U.S. and have experience treating a wide range of conditions, including GI problems, autoimmunity, hypothyroidism, cognitive mood and behavioral issues, weight gain and metabolic dysfunction, and more. Our unique model teams, clinicians with nurse practitioners and health coaches, all of whom are trained in my ADAPT framework approach to provide a high level of care to our patients. This means more support between appointments, personalized guidance on diet, lifestyle, and behavior change, a cutting edge patient portal with 24 seven access to your labs and records, handouts and resources to guide your protocols, and a team of practitioners working together on your case. We're currently accepting new patients, so if you'd like to learn more, visit chriscresser.com slash become a patient. Hey everybody, this is Chris Cresser. Welcome to another episode of Revolution Health Radio. This week, we are going to answer a listener question from Patrick. Let's take a listen. Hi Chris, my name is Patrick. Um, I'm really confused um, about a recent uh, podcast and website I've been checking on all the mastering diabetes, uh, which prones a uh, low fat, high carb, veggie, uh, vegetable diet, um, whole, whole, whole vegetable diet. And uh, it's really, it's really annoying to see that uh, this is completely uh, opposite to what we in following for the last years, uh, checking on you and different people. So I'm really confused, as I'm sure a lot of people are, and um, I would like you to, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I would like you to comment on that, uh, see what we can uh, get out of all these. Thank you. Thanks so much, Patrick, for sending in that question. Uh, it's a great question, and uh, I completely understand why you'd be confused. And there are, are both um, sensible reasons for that, I think, and there are some frustrating reasons for that as well. The reality is that there are many different diet approaches that can be effective for treating diabetes. And I think this points to a larger issue that I've talked about many times on the show and written about extensively. Um, all the way back to my, my first book, Your Personal Paleo Code, which was later published as The Paleo Cure, there really is no one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to diet. You know, everyone has different circumstances, goals, health conditions, genes, gene expression, uh, and all of that and more will affect what the best dietary approach is for that given individual. And this is why you can see studies indicating that a low-fat diet can be effective for diabetes and a low-carb diet can be effective and a ketogenic diet can be effective and a Mediterranean diet can be effective. And of course, the other obvious thing about this is that all of those diets are far, far better than the standard American diet, which is what the vast majority of people in this country and in the industrialized world at this point are following. So if you take... Um, highly refined and processed flour and other foods out of people's diets. You remove sugar, you remove industrial seed oils, and you replace that with some combination of uh, whole food nutrient-dense uh, choices like um, fish or meat, uh, various animal products, nuts and seeds, some uh, fruits and vegetables, and some starchy plants even, that is going to be an enormous difference, regardless of whether you're talking about a combination of those foods that's um, even vegan or vegetarian or paleo or ketogenic or Mediterranean or some you know combination or twist on uh, any of those approaches is going to be a vast improvement over what the majority of Americans are doing. So... The other question is, what is the time frame that is being discussed in terms of the therapeutic effect of the diet? Um, there are m many diets that can be effective in the short term. We know this. Um, most of the diets and randomized controlled studies, trials that are looking at the eff effectiveness of diets are, are short term, lasting only a few weeks. 
but there are now some some longer term studies that uh, have shown diets to be effective over a six month to one year to even eighteen months to two year period. I think the low carb diet overall performs a little bit better in those longer term comparisons than a higher carb, lower fat approach uh, for both diabetes and weight loss, but it's not a huge difference. The other thing is, is you know, what is the quality of the foods that it's being consumed? And I think this is the most important factor. And we've, I've, again, written quite a bit about this. Um, if, you, if you Google Cresser quality uh, over quantity, you'll see some articles that I've written in the past few years. Um, historically, we have fallen into this trap of what some call nutritionism or nutritional redu- reductionism, which is the idea that a calorie is a calorie, a carbohydrate is a carbohydrate, a fat is a fat, and you know, regardless of the, the source of those macronutrients. So, you know, if a carbohydrate coming from white flour and sugar is no different than a carbohydrate coming from a, a piece of whole fruit or a sweet potato. Now, I think if you say that to most people, they'll, they'll intuitively know that that's preposterous and not the case, and it doesn't fit with their experience at all. But that's really the assumption that most nutritional research has, has made and is based on for the last um, several decades, really. And it's only been recently that we've started to see some studies that are actually designed to measure the uh, impact of quality, uh, you know, changing food quality rather than just the quantity of macronutrients that are consumed. So one was the, the Gardner study out of Stanford, and they um, it was a randomized controlled trial that lasted for a year, and they assigned people into two groups, randomized people into two groups. One was a low-fat group and one was a low-carb group. Only the difference with this study compared to others was that they specifically, they gave people specific instruction on what types of food to eat. So no processed and refined foods, you know, focus on nutrient-dense whole foods so that they weren't just addressing quantity of macronutrients, they were addressing quality. And what they found was that both groups lost weight after one year. And, you know, it's quite a significant amount of weight, but there was not that much of a difference between weight loss between the, the low-carb and the low-fat group. So that was a phenomenal study that proved that quality is much more important than quantity when it comes to weight loss, especially over the long term. And so... You know, there's a, there's a ton of argument and controversy and just heated um, discussions on the Internet about whether low-carb is better or keto or low-fat or vegan or paleo. And it's, it's really quite sad, actually, um, because when you look at the data, what you find is that many of these approaches can be effective, at least especially over the shorter term, but even in the long term. And then... The, the question of which one is the best fit for you to follow as an individual comes down to your own individual circumstances, needs, and goals, and also comes down to other considerations. So, you know, I think that I, I believe that a vegan diet is potentially dangerous over the long term for many people because of the potential for nutrient deficiencies if um, supplementation is not being done uh, wisely and blood markers are not being tracked to make sure that uh, the supplements are meeting the nutritional deficiencies because in many studies, for example, uh, up to 70 to 80 percent of vegans were deficient in B12 even when they were supplementing. So, um, you know, we start to get, get into other considerations for which of these diets is best over the long term that aren't necessarily related to their efficacy in uh, treating diabetes in studies or, you know, in, in, especially in the short term. And they might, you know, other considerations might be, does that person just feel better on a higher fat, lower carb diet, which is certainly the case for many people? Or do they have another condition or set of conditions that might actually contraindicate a very high fat, low carb or ketogenic diet? So for example, do they have 
Hashimoto's and HPA axis dysfunction so, or, or so-called adrenal fatigue? Are they pregnant? Are they trying to get pregnant or nursing? And there's so many other considerations that go into what the best choice is, even if the person does have diabetes and you know addressing their blood sugar and weight uh, issues is the primary goal. There are always uh, or often other conditions that are present too. You know, most many people with diabetes, that's not the only thing that they have going on. So you have to look at all of those other factors and then consider what the the best approach is um, over the long term based on those factors. So it's really no wonder (laughs) that you're confused. I think anybody who's been um, following media and, and just general internet headlines about diet would absolutely be confused because you see apparently contradictory headlines uh, all the time. But when you get beneath the surface and you start to consider some of the nuances that I've been talking about and and just um, comparing most dietary interventions that are used in studies versus the standard American diet that most people are following today, you can see how this is actually not confusing, really. And it act- it makes quite a bit of sense that um, people would lose weight and improve their blood sugar when they go on virtually any diet uh, versus the the standard American approach. So I think that really um, brings this back to to where we started with the show and what I've I've been kind of harping on about for years now, which is the key to success over the long term for anybody, no matter what condition they're trying to address or whether they're just trying to optimize their health and create an approach that works best for them, is to individualize and customize what they're doing for their own circumstances and needs. And uh, you know, I've been uh, treating patients now for almost a decade, for over a decade actually, and I've you know, been training uh, thousands of healthcare practitioners from around the world and have a lot of exposure to um, their caseloads and what's happening with them. And the more I do this work, the more convinced I am of this fundamental truth that you really can't figure out the best diet for you by just looking at what other people are doing or listening to gurus, uh, you know, who, is, who are really um, passionate about a particular approach. And we see a lot of this on the internet, people who are convinced that everybody should do a particular diet, whether that's vegan or paleo or low-carb or keto. My advice to you is to run fast from anyone who makes that suggestion because... Um, I think those people are not being uh, intellectually honest about what the research says or even their own experience, or or they just haven't worked with um, a lot of clients or patients. Because as soon as you start working with real people, you quickly find that there there is no one-size-fits-all approach and there's no single diet approach that will work best for every single person. Um, So, you know, working with a nutritionist or dietitian or um, a functional medicine practitioner who is up to speed with um, a, a, a number of different approaches that can be effective in certain situations and knows how to do a comprehensive evaluation based on your health history and you know do some initial testing, blood work and other types of testing to create an individualized prescription for you is kind of the optimal approach. And that, I understand, is not available to everybody for various reasons. So um, another way to get at that same uh, information is to, to do some experimentation, either on your own or under the guidance of a health coach or a nutritionist, where, you know, through listening to this show and, and uh, reading my articles and other people's work and listening to other shows, you you basically come up with a hypothesis um, about what might work well for you, given your situation. So, for example, if you do have type 2 diabetes and you're overweight and that's the main issue, then you uh, follow some of the research and work that's suggesting that lower carb and ketogenic diets might be effective, um, and you give it a shot and you see how it works, and you see what symptoms improve, and uh, if any symptoms get worse, and then um, you you basically tweak 
as you go. I mean, it's certainly easier to do with guidance, but many people out there have been able to figure this out um, just by listening to podcasts and, you know, reading books and online articles. And um, although that isn't optimal, I think it's perfectly um, legitimate. And sometimes the only way forward for, for some people, depending on their resources and what they have access to. So the key thing that I want to get across here is just to whether you're working with a practitioner who's helping you to create an individualized approach or whether you're doing it on your own, really be rigorous about it and don't accept, you know, what your friend or your cousin or, um, you know, even a healthcare practitioner that you know and trust or respect says uh, will work unless you have tried it and have seen if it works for you because ultimately your your body is the final arbiter and uh, will be the decision making authority in terms of whether it works or doesn't work and um, I've seen so many people that have been harmed by uh, standardized diet advice and prescriptions and uh, you know these people often end up in my clinic a couple years after they started a, a program that was totally not right for them, um, but they kept doing it because they were told to do it or you know, they believed it was best based on what they had read. And I would just love to save those of you listening to this from, from that fate uh, because it doesn't have to be that way. So thanks again, Patrick, for sending in the question. It's a great one. Uh, I know a lot of people are, are also... Uh, confused, understandably, and I hope this was helpful in um, you know charting a clear path forward. Thanks for listening, everybody. Continue to send in your questions at chriscresser.com slash podcast question, and I'll see you next time. That's the end of this episode of Revolution Health Radio. If you appreciate the show and want to help me create a healthier and happier world, please head over to iTunes and leave us a review. They really do make a difference. If you'd like to ask a question for me to answer on a future episode, you can do that at chriscresser.com slash podcast question. You can also leave a suggestion for someone you'd like me to interview there. If you're on social media, you can follow me at twitter.com slash chriscresser or facebook.com slash chriscresserlac. I post a lot of articles and research that I do throughout the week there that never makes it to the blog or podcast, so it's a great way to stay abreast of the latest developments. Thanks so much for listening. Talk to you next time.